Hello everyone and welcome to another painting video with myself John. In this one we're going to be checking out Abigail from the Priory starter set for Mythos. Uh, one of the, well, I think she's the only female character in that starter box and I thought she'd be very interesting to try out because I've seen pictures of her painted, not many mind you, uh, but decided to try and replicate the, I guess it's the studio paint job, I'm not too sure, uh, of quite simple colours, but I wanted to try something a little different, so I've mixed in Zenithal highlighting with the airbrush, you know, priming in Zenithing with the airbrush, uh, I've used a bit of contrast paint, and I've also switched up from using washes, uh, like my previous videos, and actually tried out some inks, so we'll see how that goes, I, I think it turned out well, I think the, the end result is quite good, so again, always trying to paint to a level that anyone would be happy to put on the tabletop or most people would be happy to put on the tabletop and making it achievable. So switching out to inks was interesting. I think uh, it's something I need to practice with a bit more. But anyway, you'll hear about all of that towards the end of the video. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So the first thing I want to do uh, with Abigail is start painting her skin. I want to do that because I feel like I can be neat, I can be less neat with the skin now and then be more neat with the details that will be filling in some of the blanks. She doesn't have any skin anywhere that's particularly awkward to reach, so I'm hoping that by doing that first I can still get in and do her clothing without any real issues and I don't have to be necessarily that uh, neat with it. So the first layer is going to be Vallejo Game Extra Opaque Heavy Skin Tone. I have that thinned on my palette 2 to 1 with a little bit of acrylic thinner and what that means is we're going to be applying uh, about two coats of it and as you can see also I'll just uh, reiterate my, my priming and zenithing method is a uh, black primer through the airbrush with a white zenith also through the airbrush but also focusing on the likes of her face, the fabric where it's taut on her thighs down to her knee uh, just to highlight them up a little bit and on her uh, right hip here as well uh, just to make some more hot spots and make it look a bit more interesting. So I have the skin tone ready here so we're just going to give that give her a couple of coats of this. With our uh, extra opaque skin tone down, we can have a look at what we've got, and I think that's all right. It's a nice, solid-ish looking skin tone. So I want to play a little bit. I, it's not something I do very much on these videos, but I want to try a couple of things out. Uh, I have recently got myself a set of wash inks uh, from Green Stuff World, so I'm going to be trying out pe Picatum Flesh, which is one, <laughs> and some Blush Red. And I want to try and apply these um, one heavier than the other. So I'm going to try the blush first. And it's just a, a little red ink. But I'm going to thin it down a little bit with some acrylic thinner. And what I'm going to try and do is tone her face a little bit. So <clears throat> I've never done this before. I don't know if it's going to be worth it or not. So I'm going to apply just a bit of it to her cheeks. And maybe just a little touch on the forehead near the near her hairline a bit. Maybe under the nose and under the lips. I'm not honestly sure this is really going to add anything, but I definitely want to start playing with inks a little bit more in my own hobby, so seems like a a good first step you know sort of play with it a little bit I'm probably doing this entirely wrong so <laughs> I, I don't mind failing uh, under camera so if I think it's not worth it then that's that's basically it so for the flesh wash sort of a a reddish sort of sepia that we have here and I want to give everything else once the blush is dry, I will add it there as well, but I'm going to ink the rest of her skin tone a little bit. Because this is just going to be a bit of a, a shade before we apply some layering. 
So we're going to do that. And that's not actually a bad ink, actually. That's, that's quite nice. It's quite interesting what it's doing there. It's obviously bringing her um, her skin tone to the, uh, to the point where I would say it looks a bit too vibrant. But that's okay, because we're going to be layering over it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I don't think there's any point in saying, oh, well, you know, it'll be fine, or we'll just roll with it. I am going to put this down, let it dry, and then see for myself if I like the effect or not. And if I don't, that's fine. I will do a bit of learning on working with inks a bit more and try and get it to work for me, so... And I felt having a single character figure like this would be a, a good time to just try a bit harder. Now I know a lot of the stuff I do is sort of army based and stuff like that, and that's that's well and all well and good. But I do want to try harder on some of these these games in particular, Mythos and stuff like that, which have basically named characters for everything. So I think the ink on her face is dry, so we're just going to add the flash wash on top of it, on top of the blush. She has such a characterful face as well. She looks angry, but also slightly surprised that she has to be angry. Abigail's definitely must be a, a very interesting character. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. And when we come back, I can sort of decide um, on my layering and stuff and see what colors I want to go with. So the inks have dried, and I don't think they're the worst in the world. Certainly, certainly my application of them could probably do with a, a bit of work. But I think they'll be all right. So I'm going to be moving on to layering over this. And for the layer, we're going with Katie and Flash Tone from Citadel. And I've thinned it two to one with a little bit of flow improver. Uh, that's just to just to help things along a little bit, make it more a, a transparent layer to sort of tone up uh, the various paints, so or the various layers underneath already. So let's uh, start applying this. And we're going to focus it on areas like her forehead here, her nose, her cheekbones, and get a little bit more on my brush, and down onto her chin, and back up the other side on her face. And it's just going to be a matter of putting one layer down, seeing how it's reacted with the, the layers underneath it, and then applying it again if we think we need uh, another layer on top. So, for example, I'm just going to do the arm here. I'm going to try and retain some of the deeper shading with the layer as well. So I'm going to let the skin tone sit higher than the, the, the deeper recesses on her face and on her skin. With my layer now down, uh, I've added maybe about three or four layers to her skin and I'm still maintaining a bit of shade. So the next thing I'm doing is I've taken my base mix of um, Katie and Flesh Tone with uh, Flow Improver and, oops, added a drop of Vallejo Flat Flesh, uh, just to brighten it up a little bit. And now we will start the layer process again. So we'll start up here, but this time around we're only going to be focusing on those higher points. So the flat of her forehead, the protrusion of her cheekbone, I think we're going to Get a little bit on there too. I 
I'll have to let these layers dry a little bit and then do a second one, I think. So moving on to the next layer of skin, uh, I'm just going with the flat flesh with just a, a bit of um, flow improver in it. So again, quite a thin layer, um, just to be sure that it remains sort of transparent and easily, easily to, or easy to apply. The skin is looking pretty good though. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Now this is going to be the last layer, so I really want it to build up a sort of final kind of a sheen to her skin. So it's a matter of applying it carefully in the areas that we want the highest tone. So definitely the tip of her nose, a little bit across her brow, the highest part of her cheekbones. So on both sides. And maybe a little bit on the bottom of her chin just to keep that going as well. And then just applying it sparingly or quite thinly on the highest parts of her arms. Maybe a little bit on the elbow there too. So with the skin uh, where I want it to be, I'm going to take a little break from that sort of detail. Uh, I will come back to do the eyes and such, but I am going to start blocking out some other colors. And I want to start with her blouse or her shirt. And I'm going to make it just look like a bit of a, a grey shirt. I don't want it to be too exciting. Uh, so I'm going to be using a contrast paint, Apothecary White. And we're going to be just blocking that colour out first. And then after that we're going to block out the colours for her skirt. So just a case of taking my Apothecary White. and just giving her shirt or her blouse, whichever, whichever it is, um, just a layer of that. And we will come back and uh, do a bit of highlighting and stuff on that, so we'll maybe highlight it up to be a bit more like a white shirt. But this starts the process off quite nicely. Okay, <clears throat> with that down, we're moving on to the skirt. The skirt is going to be red. I'm sort of half following uh, the, the painted examples that I've seen of hers, so I'm going to try and stick to that and for that we're going to be using another contrast paint Blood Angels Red okay so with that, we're going to also go on to our leather detail. And for the leather detail, everything that's going leather will now get uh, a couple of coats of Mornfang Brown. So we're going to be looking at her gloves, her boots, the belt, the holster. And what we might do is pick out maybe a different color for each of these two bags, uh, just to, to vary that a little bit. So perhaps, um, let me see if I can find We'll perhaps go a Rhinox Hide for one of them. And we'll pick out another brown here that might be quite uh, interesting. I have a Steel Legion Drab somewhere. So I have a Steel Legion Drab, which will probably do the smaller pack, make it look a bit more canvassy uh, than this one, which I feel would suit being a bit more leather. So we'll go ahead and block out those colors and then come back and uh, look at where we're going to go next. With the browns for her leather uh, laid out, you can see what I've been trying to go for and trying to just vary those colors a little bit. So we're going to start using some inks again. I'm, I'm kind of wanting to 
use this miniature as a bit of a practice for that. So we're going to be inking over her skirt and we're going to be using uh, sang sang Sanguium Red, yeah Sanguium Red, uh, just as a layer over uh, the skirt just to richen up that colour a bit. These are intensity inks apparently so what I'm expecting uh, is nice high vibrancy and oh wow okay definitely <laughs> definitely a lot more intense than I was thinking it was going to be but hey I had pre-warned myself they are called intensity inks so again just going to be careful not to overstep the bounds anywhere and yeah that's that's going to look really good. So I think after that, we'll probably have to do a little bit of a highlight job. And that would more or less be her skirt finished. The thing is with the contrast paints, when you're putting contrast paint down, particularly the red over a white uh, undercoat, it does tend to look a little bit peachy or a little bit pinky. So the ink is definitely a good way to retain that pre-shade and bring the tones into into line with what you you want if you want a red definitely that is wow <laughs> that's a very strong red so with that i'm gonna let that dry a couple of minutes but we're going to go over all her uh, leather detail and we're going to use another intensity ink walnut brown uh hopefully not going to be just as completely overbearing as the red was but uh the red certainly did its job well there so i'm happy with that uh, these are all new bottles, by the way, so I'm I'm having to puncture them uh, because they have a bit of a seal on the top of the the drip tip. So anyway, let's uh, let's give it a go on the leather. So let's start on her boots and see what um, what this ink does for us. I think it's maybe a little bit thin there. I have a little bit of water on my brush, so. That does look really smart, that. Okay, so that's what I was hoping that brown ink was going to do, was very much going to sit into the recesses and heavily shade as well as add just a bit of a tint to the rest of the boot, which is making that look far more interesting and i think it's actually making that shading a bit tighter but with inks the the shading should look tighter than if you use a, an acrylic wash for example um and it would probably get intensified a bit if you had a, a gloss varnish over the miniature first um but i don't see that being much of an issue here because i'm looking for it to tint a little bit more than just get into the recesses so the gloss varnish would prevent so much of that becoming a tint to the, the part. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. What I'm going to do now is continue on with it up over all the other leather detail, uh, let it dry, and then when we come back, I think we will probably look at maybe adding a highlight to her shirt, uh, just to tidy it up a bit, and then maybe start looking at highlighting the leather and the, the skirt as well. So the inks are all down on the leather work, which is all looking pretty neat. I think just a little bit of a highlight ought to sort that out. However, we're going to move on to highlighting her shirt. And for that, I'm going with Citadel Ceramite White. Uh, just nice and simple. And we're doing that with a, a good small brush. And what I want to do is basically highlight the areas that um, the... Uh, let me try that again. Highlight the areas on the edges and the upper parts where the contrast paint has pulled away from. So for example, look at the edge of the shirt there. And maybe just a little bit across part of the sleeve and then we'll work up a little bit like that so we're not doing too much 
in the way of highlighting. We just want to add a little bit more brightness to certain parts of her shirt. Like so. So not, not too much, but um, just enough. I don't think she needs too much highlighting further down on the chest there. I really want to keep it to the upper areas. So with that done, we're going to look at highlighting up her skirt. And for that, I'm going to go with Citadel um, Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, we're going to try and just keep, keep to the upper layers. And we're not going to um, do a lot of highlighting work there, as I managed to um, <laughs> practically spill the pot. That's fine. I'd only only medium managed to spill out, so not not a big deal there. That's okay. So that panic over. We're just going to see about getting some brightness back up in here. Add a little bit of water there, make it a bit more of a thin layer. And that is pretty much all I want to do to the skirt, because that has brought that up very nicely indeed there. Now, what I'm going to do now is, let me see here. I think we should probably highlight the leather. Uh, Highlighting the leather is going to be really simple. It'll be the same process I've been doing with the white and the red, but we're going to be just going back to the base color that I've painted each piece, and we'll just pick out some areas and, and highlight them a little bit. There are some metal details, and we'll tackle those after I've got the leather all highlighted up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, and then when we come back, I will show you what each piece looks like when it's all highlighted up, and then we can move on. So the highlighting on the leather is all complete. It's nice and subtle, but it definitely helps, particularly with this bag on the top of her back. It uh, helps a lot with that. Now, in general, yeah, the, it's a bit subtle, but that's fine. So, from here we're going to be moving on to metallics, and there's two metallics I really want to run with, which is a brass and a silver. So the silver I'm going to start with is going to be up on the top of the pickaxe, and possibly pick out a few different buckles and stuff uh, on her herself. The rest of the buckles and the buttons on her blouse or her shirt are going to be in Vallejo model color brass, while the standard metal is going to be scale color heavy metal. So I think this is scale 75 uh, paint, which is very good there. The heavy metal one is particularly good. So again, just gonna be picking out those colors I'll show you them and then we'll do a little bit of highlighting and then after that we'll be moving on to some wood and then her hair and that should pretty much wrap her up. So with the metallics now done, we can check out what I've done. So I've given her steel toe cap boots, metal buckles on her boots and then brass buckles and latches on her uh, belt. Her uh, shirt has gold buttons or brass buttons and every other buckle up there is just brass. So it all looks pretty good. I've also painted in with the metal I used for the pickaxe, the two tools that she has hanging from her uh, belt, and now we're just going to tone them down a little bit by using some uh, contrast black templar. And that's just going to be applied uh, fairly thinly, uh, if I can make sure that my brush is clean and ready to go. So yeah, we'll just give that a coat of our black templar. Maybe go a little heavier than that. So I want it to be a, a dark metal, but the, the contrast will allow it to retain a sort of a highlight to it. And 
and then see them down here on her hip with this little hammer and this which I think is a chisel I think is a chisel I'm not sure anyway let's clean my brush off and then I'm going to pick out a color for the handle of the pickaxe and I think I'm probably going to go with one of my my staples at the minute from working at home my Panzer Aces weathered wood and then we can ink that down a little and make it look pretty good after that we can then move on to some uh, eyes and move on to her hair and then we can wrap the model up after that so pretty straightforward I'm just going to be blocking out the, the weathered wood um, just getting a bit of water onto the paint or into the paint and onto the brush let's not take it too high yet let's let that black templar dry a bit more first okay so that's what i'm going for i'll tidy that up in a minute uh so we'll let the black templar dry finish the um weathered wood off and then what I'm probably going to do off camera as well is give it a little um, touch of ink which I'm probably going to use the uh, walnut wood ink that I used before, walnut brown, uh, the Green Stuff World one. So we'll do all that off camera and we'll come back and uh, start working on her face and her hair. So moving on from the metals, I think the Black Templar has dried quite nicely and it's shaded that pickaxe head down rather well. Uh, the wood on the handle of the pickaxe has turned out alright too. I'm not going to worry too much about highlighting that because I just want it to look a bit darker and dirtier. The The focus really is uh, Abigail herself. I think her skirt stands out really well, her shirt stands out really well, and I need to make sure that her face, her eyes and her hair are all sort of more uh, focal points on her. So with that excuse <laughs> put, to, put to bed, we're going to start using uh, some ceramite white and we're going to try and paint in the whites of her eyes and yes I know there's about a million different ways to do eyes without messing them up so uh, yeah we're, we're gonna have to be fairly careful with this see if I can okay clearly my white is drying on the brush it's a bit of a problem. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get that other eye, especially when your paintbrush just decides to roll off the back of your hand. All right, we'll keep trying. certainly have white on them <laughs> oh dear um yeah it's it it's always i think it's always going to be a struggle for me uh, particularly under camera so let's not worry too much about it and let's get um a little bit of color down so i'm going to try some extra opaque uh heavy blue from vallejo because it's kind of a, it's not an incredible, well, it is a quite a rich blue, but at the same time, it's still a nice sort of colour I want to put into her eyes, so. Let's see how badly we can mess this up, shall we? So what I'm going to try and do is get into the middle of the eye. Well, that's not the worst I've done. Definitely not the worst I've done. 
That might might pass muster. What I will do though is I'll double check that off camera as well and just maybe tidy it up a little bit. So I'm going to try and move on to the hair. I don't know if I'm going to add a... No, I don't think there's any point in adding a black dot into the eye. I think we're we're trying a bit... I'm definitely trying a bit too hard now, so I have to reel myself back a little bit uh, before I make a complete and utter mess. So, uh, yeah, we're going to move on to hair colour. I think I'm going to make her blonde. Uh, or straw blonde, I think, sort of. So we're going to base coat. We're going to base coat with Vallejo Model Colour German Camouflage Orange Ochre. Uh, because that's a nice colour that once you add a bit of ink down onto and then some highlighting, I think it's going to make a good sort of a straw blonde. At least I hope so anyway. So pretty straightforward. We're just going to base coat her hair. All right, so that is her hair painted in, base colored. And again, I've tried to thin the paint down a little so that the, um, the zenithal work we did with the airbrush right at the start uh, is still visible. And I think it still is largely anyway. And I've also painted in her single eyebrow. Don't know how easy that is to spot on camera there, guys. So um, you can tell me in the comments if you've noticed or not. So I'm moving on to inking her hair down now. And we're going to use a little bit of sepia Sepia Vetus. Okay, Sepia Vetus. I wonder uh, if that means anything in particular. I don't know. And I'm going with this because it is quite a sort of a yellowy, browny sort of colour, and I think it will complement uh, our ochre colour rather well. So I'll maybe use a bigger brush than that because. Let's get a bigger brush than that. Try it instead. So, having thinned it down a little bit with some water. I'm just going to give her a light to medium coat of this. Just over all the hair. Just to add that, that definition. A little bit of shading. Keep her in focus on their camera, I do apologize. Okay, so that's not too bad. So we're just going to wait for that to dry and let's see, is it actually, well, it probably is actually dry enough already. Um, what I'm going to do next then is return to the, the camouflage ochre, the German camouflage ochre, uh, which is our base color. And I'm just going to lightly brush in, uh, almost like a dry brush, just the upper parts of her hair again. That's not bad, that looks all right actually. Her hair is getting a lot more interesting looking now, so. That's good. Uh, what I'm going to have to do next then is mix up or lighten uh, the initial colour. So taking the um, camouflage ochre, what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of Citadel Wraithbone to the mix. I'm just going to do it live, folks. Just going to mix it while the camera's still rolling. And I'm going to see if I can just make that base yellow a bit more bright. So, there's the colour it's going up to. Quite a bright colour now. I think this should help with some of our uh, our definition and our highlights. So let's look at the upper parts. Yeah, that is looking nice. Do you like that? Okay, that's pretty good. Quite happy with how bright that's starting to look. Now I'm going to add a bit more of the Wraithbone to that lighter mix. 
probably add a fair bit more actually and mix it all up to make it almost a shine. So we're going to try and add a bit of sheen to her hair. In fact, we could almost, almost get away with just pure wraith bone, but we're going to keep a bit of that ochre color in there regardless. And this will be the last stage of highlighting her hair. And I'm just going to do that over the, the crown of her head or basically the top of her head. So let's have a look and see what this does. Yes. A lot brighter. Heck of a lot brighter. So let's take some more paint off my brush because I think we could quite easily risk going too heavy on this final bit. I think I'll maybe add a bit to where her hair is sort of curling back out a little bit, perhaps catching a bit of light there too. in this bit of a curl here and maybe the bits that are framing the side of her face there we go I'm very happy with how that hair has turned out for a, a simple what three or four step base ink and two two or three highlights yeah two more or less two, more or less three highlights actually, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is off camera, we're going to give her a spray, an airbrush coat of matte varnish just to tie all the inks down. After that, I'm going to paint the base black and then we'll have a look at her finished model. So here she is all finished. Now I've painted the base black and uh, given her a coat of matte varnish or a couple of coats of matte varnish through the airbrush and that's all settled down. And I always think that final coat of matte varnish does so much to settle the, the model down, particularly now that I've started playing with inks a little bit and they tend to dry a bit glossy. So once you get that matte down, everything is on the same level of being matte and you can get a better idea of how you've done. And I don't think Abigail here has turned out too bad. I actually quite like her. Uh, I was a bit dubious at the start because it's just not the sort of thing I do a lot. I don't paint a lot of skin. I don't um, do a lot of eyes. And trying to figure out if I wanted this to be on the tabletop, how much detail would I want? And yes, because a lot of the, 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 the models uh, for Mythos are essentially named characters in a way, it does give that sort of sense of, well, I need to put a bit more effort into each of them individually. And that's no, not so bad for someone that's wanting... Uh, a small force of very interesting looking models and very interesting looking characters and I think this would be probably a bit more than what I would do personally if it was my own stuff but I wanted to try and push myself a little bit with my skin tones uh, and the hair and, and stuff like that and then mix in some easier techniques you know like using a bit of contrast paint to get the initial base color down and then just maybe a little bit of highlight or shade here and there just to just to accentuate that a little bit. I think it's worked well on the cloth. Uh, I wouldn't have used the contrast paint so much so on her leather work and stuff like that. I, I prefer the, the traditional paint look. I like the finish that I've got from that. And overall, I'm quite happy with her. And more happy with the face than I thought I would be. I initially thought I wouldn't like that very much at all. But in the end... I'm still learning as I go along with this too, and I'm picking up little bits here and there. I should probably learn a bit more <laughs> before I present it to you guys. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one and maybe taken away some ideas, perhaps maybe picking up a set of inks and trying them out instead of use going to your usual uh, traditional washes and stuff like that. And maybe see if inks are that one little step that you need to raise your game just a little bit more and make something that you're a bit more happy with in the end. However, not going to bash washes because they're still a very strong staple uh, for miniature painting on, in the wargaming community. So, 
I will leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching as always. Please put your comments down below and um, until next time, stay safe and I will see you all again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.